Hello everyone and welcome back to part four, I think it is, of the uh, concept for the um, lock gates. Uh, so as you can see uh, I've now got the lock gate here and I've connected it up to one survey which is one servo which is down here which I'll show you in a second. Um, so what will happen um, on the real one um, is that a canal barge will come in so the gate will be open and the water level will be at the correct height you'll bore up they will get off and operate the guillotine lock um, by first opening the sluice gates which will lower the water this gate will First of all, be shut so no more water will come in. So he'll moor up, shut this gate, open the sluice gates on this gate, which will lower the water. Down to the correct level. And then he will then there will be a control panel here. If I will post a picture up of the um, a typical uh, guillotine lock. Um, which I've done before, but I'll show it again. Um, so there will be an electronic control panel here which raises and lowers the gate. Uh, so then the gate will then be operated. And then he will jump back onto the barge and then go out and that will be along the visor. Anybody coming in is the reverse process, so they will come in, moor up, and the little mini does have underneath, the little mini does have steering on it, so I can steer it to a certain extent. Um, he will moor up, the gate will close, or he will close the gate. Open the sluice gates this end and the gate will open, sorry, he will fill the um, water up by opening the sluice gates, get it right. Once it's up to the right level he will operate the gate and then he will be able to go through. That now really completes the process of getting the gates to work and the water level to work and that really is all this was meant to be. Um, now I know how I can do it, um, I can do it properly on a real model. So I can take this all apart and probably break this up after I've built the proper one because I need to take a few dimensions off of this so that I can make the model. Um, but the electronics, the th three servos, um, I haven't replicated this at this end, there's no point. All I wanted to do was make sure that I could get the guillotine gate going up and down. That's really all I wanted it for. So now I've done that, there's no need to replicate it up here. Um, I can do that on the, on the model. Um, so that's it. Water goes up and down. And the gate opens and shuts. And it's a very, very simple procedure which I'll show you. <coughs> You've seen the way the water works by the two servos underneath here one here and one here and it just operates the um, the lift for the water and around here if I can show you is the workings for the gate so I've got one servo here this will all be hidden so that you won't see any of this you won't see the wire operating the gate 
um, that will all be in channels. There'll be <laughs> these won't be here. This will be a a structure, uh, a metal structure, as in the photographs. Um, so it would be a combination of a gantry going across here. I will put a dummy motor at the top to represent the motor which will normally lift this up and down but I've done mine from below because I didn't want any workings um, showing. Um, and it operates by that servo going up and down. You can just see the arm here. which the servo operates. And I can adjust the throw, or rather than the, the height, should I say, and the throw, I guess, um, by utilizing three buttons on here, um, on the control board. Uh, one's the programming button, and the other is the height, and the, uh, the height, and the depth of the way the servo goes up and down. So I can adjust this accordingly to the lift I want, as long as I've got the throw right. Um, I can adjust it to the correct height and the correct depth by operating these two buttons along with the programming button on the controller. So a very, very simple operation made possible by Megapoint controllers. Absolutely fantastic piece of kit. I thoroughly recommend them. Um, very, very easy to set up. And the nice thing is that <clears throat> with the DCC module, which is out of your shot here, I'll bring it into shot with this simple little circuit board here. It converts everything analog here into digital so that I can operate it on my iPad. Uh, so I'm really, really pleased. Um, as I said before, um, it, <laughs> this concept does look a bit Heath Robinson, but um, it was never meant to look pretty. It was just meant to get, excuse me, meant to get the thing working, um, which it does uh, very well, I think, and it will operate even better um, once I've done the model. The gate is operated inside two H channels, which you can see here, one there and one there, and that is able to then slide within the inner channel. And it's just, as I said, one servo with one piece of wire, which pushes it up or pulls it down. <coughs> the gate, that is. So that's it, that really now concludes the prototype or the concept of um, the log gates. Now very kindly a few people have sent me a link to a video which I'll put in the description of a chap who's also built a moving lock with raising water. He's used the um, ordinary opening and closing type gates, which is fine. Um, and on his channel, I managed to find the workings of the way he's done it. Uh, and I shall also put that in a link too, in the description. And it might be <coughs> worthwhile you having a look, just out of curiosity, because it's a masterpiece of engineering. It really, I mean, it's far, far more complex than what I've done. Um, but it, as I always keep saying, each to their own. If you've got a, um, an idea, um, there are many, many ways of making that idea come to fruition, uh, depending on which way you design it. Um, I've designed mine this way, he's designed his, his way, um, which works very, very well. Um, the way he moves the barges along is by a huge, long rubber but a tooth belt, which I can only assume has got a magnet on it. Um, and so it's very much like the um, system I've got for the bikes on my village. Uh, and, and they just follow a magnet round on the track. And I think that's possibly 
how he's done his too. Um, the motor he's using to raise and lower the water seems a bit noisy, um, but that's by the by. You know, that's, he can disguise that, I'm sure, if he so wishes. But the, the, the way he's done it is ingenious. It's very well thought out. Um, but much, much more complicated than what I've done. Uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, somebody suggested that I, or a couple of people suggested that I could um, put sound on for the operation of this of water. That is already taken care of. Uh, I've got uh, the facility to um, record water and download it to a sound decoder and have that operating when I press a particular button on the iPad. So you, just like operating a steam locomotive or a diesel locomotive with sound, when you do a certain function, you get a certain sound. And just like that, I can have this operating the same way. So there will be sound included with this eventually. Um, and uh, I guess there will be people saying, well, could I not have um, when the boat comes, when the boat comes in, <laughs> um, could I not have it on a macro where when the water gets to the right level, that this gate automatically starts opening or shutting, as a case of opening in this case. Um, yes, I could have that, but I don't want that. Um, the, the reason being is that uh, I really, really don't like automated things on the model railway. I don't like block identification. I don't like shuttles. I don't like anything like that. I like to have under my control everything so that I can decide when this gate opens. It might be the case that the fact that the bloke moors up and he takes his time to open the gate. There's nobody behind him, nobody in front of him. There's no rush. Um, so he can decide when to open the gate and just like him I want to decide that too. So I don't want macros for operating this at the same time as the water or anything like that. I want to do it all individually at my request rather than a macros request. Uh, so that's it. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, I hope I haven't bored you to tears with this. It's been a really, really interesting project for me to come up with solutions. Um, my, my first one for this, opening the gate, it worked, but the problem was that I had the wire coming down through the centre of the gate, which is obviously no good because the boat wouldn't be able to get through. Um, so that in itself was a, a no-no straight away, but at least I've got the gate going up and down. From that, I could then make a modification to it so that I could hide the wire. Uh, and not only hide it, but take it out of the way so that the boat could come through. Um, it's these sort of things which you have to think about when designing it. Um, and so you start off as a, as a basic, that's what I did anyway, start off as a basic to make sure that I can raise and lower the gate so that I had enough throw on the servo, that the servo arm was long enough, um, all that sort of thing. Once I got that, I could then refine it so that I could then hide the wire out of the way so that A, you don't see it, and B, the boat can go through. Absolutely fantastic um, project to do. Uh, and I'm pleased that I've actually gone ahead and done it. Uh, because now I can put this to one side and I can now start making the model for real. Uh, which won't be dissimilar to what you see here as regards operating, but it will look quite different in its appearance. 
because you won't see any of this below here obviously that will all be hidden uh, this will be resting on the top of the baseboard if you like so the only visible part will be from here upwards and all the, the two ends will be um, gantries um, not just bits of card like this uh, they will be proper gantries and made to look fairly realistic I've got some um, wheels which need going across the gantry for the operation of it which are hand wheels so that you can manually climb up the top if the electronics fail you can manually climb up the top and turn the wheel and it will open and close the gate so I've got all that to make as well so there's a lot of detail to go on here yet uh, well not on here but on, on the real model and so it should look quite attractive I think um, and by the time I put the scenics on um, the water, uh, grass, paving, bridge, all that sort of thing. By the time I've got that on and installed, I'm hoping that it will look uh, attractive. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you have watched all four, uh, hats off to you. Because <laughs> it's not an amazing um, thing to watch it's just a little bit interesting i guess i was telling like steve davis don't i a little bit interesting um yeah so thank you and uh i will speak to you again soon and please feel free to comment um and, but <laughs> i'll say it once again but it, it's a waste of time i i know that many of you have your own thoughts in ways that I could have done this but I've done it now so I, I don't really need it you know there's no point in saying well what you could have done was used to blah de blah or you could have done this and you could have done well yeah I could have done I could have done exactly what this other chap has done but I didn't want to do that I wanted to do it my way to see if it worked and on both occasions the raising and the lowering of the water the raising and the lowering of the gates, both those worked. May not be what you thought, but I don't really care. <laughs> um, I've solved the situation, I've done what I wanted to set out to do, um, and as far as I'm concerned, that's really it. So, anyway, I will speak to you again soon, and uh, before Christmas anyway, I'll need to start doing my Christmas video, I think next so look out for that in the future um, and I'll speak to you again so bye for now and thank you very much for watching bye